here's what I think the lose lose situation is for these guys. If Jake wins, then he beat an old guy. So if he loses, his career is really hurt because he lost to a 57 year old. If Mike wins, it does nothing for his actual legacy. I mean, beating a YouTuber is not exactly going to be his claim to fame. He's had an incredible career, so it does nothing for him. If he loses, he lost to a YouTuber. I think for both guys, it's a lose-lose situation. If you did Netflix announced their next huge live event, AT&T Stadium in Dallas and in Arlington. I mean, it's going to be massive, and it is Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. Let's look at their promo. Now, that promo is as cheesy as possible. Wow. Uh, and it did exactly what Netflix wanted for it to do. Uh, my oldest son, Lane, he texted me when I was at lunch on Thursday. Have you seen what's going on? I didn't know what he was talking about. He, <laughs> he sent me just the graphic, you know, Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. And I literally thought he was joking. I, I thought this has to be some kind of a prank. And so I looked it up for myself. And guess what? <laughs> it's real. Somehow, this is real life. Somehow. This is happening. Jake Paul, the, the Vine kid from the early 2000s, is going to box Mike Tyson. Jake Paul, who has fought like one and a half real boxers ever, is going to fight perhaps the greatest, if not the greatest, the most dangerous heavyweight of all time. Mike Tyson was an absolute murderer. I mean, he, he dude, he was so scary. You watch him box and you're literally scared for the other person's life. Now, the narrative on this is very skewed because some are saying Jake Paul is the most courageous man who has ever lived because he's going to step into the ring with Iron Mike Tyson. They might have a point. Here's Mike Tyson at 57 years old training in boxing. So that's uh, terrifying, you know, like that's that's still scary. That's still Iron Mike, right? At the same time, Iron Mike is 57 and he has serious sciatica issues. And there's been videos of him going through the airport in a wheelchair in the last couple of years. This video obviously went viral as soon as this was announced, just due to the fact that he is outside walking with the use of a cane. He's not walking quickly. Uh, people are trying to talk to him. He's hobbling. This does not look like someone, a young man, up and coming boxer, YouTube star, should be tempting to get into the ring. And so depending on his health and depending on where he's at with his training, you might get absolute killer Mike Tyson or you might get sciatica walking stick Tyson. Which one is he? And who does this help actually? And like, what is the ultimate goal? So is Jake uh, a coward? Is Jake courageous? Is Mike Tyson potentially tarnishing his legacy? Is Mike Tyson going to be the hero of the world for putting out one of the Paul brothers? Here's what I think, and it is a, a bit of a negative view. I think the only reason to do this fight are money and status. As a matter of fact, I really believe that this is a lose-lose situation for Jake Paul and for Mike Tyson. Now, they are going to win something, at minimum, probably an absolutely insane payday. Like they are going to rake in the money. They have to be. And the other thing they're hoping for is status. But this is somewhat like a shortcut to status for Jake Paul. This is a way for him to jump the line. So if he can even perform decently against Mike Tyson, then allegedly, maybe in his mind, he has some kind of claim to start getting more and more advanced opponents. As he has stated, he is trying to become the boxing champion of the world. To me, this looks like trying to jump the line for money and status. And I think historically, when you try to jump to the front of the line, you inevitably create 
kind of lose-lose situations. Here's what I think the lose-lose situation is for these guys. If Jake wins, then he beat an old guy. So if he loses, his career is really hurt because he lost to a 57-year-old. If Mike wins... It does nothing for his actual legacy. I mean, beating a YouTuber is not exactly going to be his claim to fame. He's had an incredible career, so it does nothing for him. If he loses, he lost to a YouTuber. I think for both guys, it's a lose-lose situation. If you disagree, tell me in the comments. Maybe you have a completely different perspective and can change my mind on this. It feels like a lose-lose situation, and it feels like a lose-lose situation because Mike Tyson seems like he might be a shortcut to success for Jake Paul. And shortcut Cuts cut short long runs. That's Chance the Rapper. I love that line. That is so true. Shortcuts cut short long runs. You have to build one step at a time, one level of success at a time, one accomplishment at a time, one skill set at a time. That's how you build a life of greatness. But we live in the culture of instant gratification. We want it and we want it right now. We do not want to wait. There's so many stories of people who sought instant gratification and on the other side of it, got absolute misery and destruction. You can look at David and Bathsheba who did not want to wait. He saw what he wanted. He wanted it right then, called for it. We see the Israelites who want something to worship. And so Moses is on the mountain and they create the golden calf and bow down to it. One of the best examples are the brothers, Jacob and Esau in the Old Testament. Both of them wanted to be blessed. They were twins. And the story in scripture says, that Jacob came out second, literally clasped on to the heel of his brother. Like they're even fighting in the womb. And both of them end up in situations in scripture where they make these impulsive, instant gratification decisions that end up causing these lose-lose situations. We see this in Esau's life. It says in Genesis 25, when the boys grew up, Esau became an expert hunter, an outdoorsman, but Jacob was a quiet man who stayed at home. Isaac, the father, loved Esau because he had a taste for wild game, but Rebecca, the mother, loved Jacob. And once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field exhausted and said to Jacob, let me eat some of that because I'm exhausted. And Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. Look, said Esau, I'm about to die, so what good is a birthright to me? And Jacob said, swear to me first. And so he swore to Jacob and he sold his birthright to him. Your birthright as the firstborn in the ancient world was everything. As the firstborn, you get a double portion of inheritance. As the firstborn, you are what the genealogy runs through. You are the person of legacy. You are the person who manages the estate on the other side of your father's passing. You, you are next in line to your father. He sold that for a bowl of beans. Instant gratification that created a lose-lose situation for him. Now, it was still a lose-lose situation from Jacob because he had the birthright, but he didn't have the blessing. He still wasn't the oldest and he wants the blessing and he wants it now. And so when you go to Genesis 27, that's exactly what Jacob does. We won't read the whole thing, but his father has gone blind. And so he literally disguises himself as Esau, drops his voice a register, comes in and gets the blessing, steals the blessing. So you might think worked out for Jacob. He's got the birthright and the blessing. He also has a brother who is an expert hunter and a, and a man's man, an outdoorsman who now wants to kill him. And so Jacob has to flee for his life and spend the early part of his adult years in a foreign land. It's a lose-lose situation because when you try to jump to the front of the line, you inevitably create a lose-lose situation for yourself. Maybe this will work out perfectly for everyone. Maybe it rockets Jake Paul to even higher levels of superstardom. Maybe he ends up being seen as, seen as the most skilled boxer and the greatest boxer of all time. I tend to think that when you jump the line and you try to skip steps in your progression towards success, that you end up harming yourself along the way. And patience can go a long way to building great Greatness, not instant gratification, but greatness that can last and last forever. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed so you can stay up to date with all new content. And if you want early access, exclusive content, and monthly live Q&As, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Clayton Tyler.